Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright sitting in my van, sitting in traffic here in Santiago, Chile. And I was thinking about a setting to place myself in for my next video, which is on, which is this video, the next video in the How to Draw series, which is on the positive externalities of production. And this idea came to me and I just thought, well, I'll just film it right now and I'll tell you about it at the end. Let's first check out the, check out the, this next installment of the market failure series on how to draw the positive externalities of production. Here we go. All right, let's take a look at how to draw this thing. What's the positive externality of production curve look like? Well, I'm going to say this once again. I've been saying this in my, all of the series here. It's like you've got to figure out where this story begins. And where this story begins is with the boom. Check that video out right there. The base diagram for all market failure um, scenarios. All market failure diagrams start with that diagram, the base diagram. If you don't know how to draw the diagram you're seeing right here, not only draw it, but understand why it is the way it is, go see that video right now. If you've already understood and already seen that video, stick around and here we go. Positive externalities of production. The first thing you want to know is, this is production, man. So what line is, what, what's going to be affected? This curve here is going to be affected. How is that, how is that going to be affected? Well, it's going to be affected because the um, producers, because this is positive externality of production. So the old, so something's going to happen with production that is beneficial beyond the actual transaction. Okay. So what we're going to use as an example is education. If I am a school, I'm a, I'm a school teacher here in Santiago, Chile, I teach IB economics, then the actual consumption, the production, my producing of the education creates a positive externality for other people. Like if you were in my class and I were teaching you, you'd be able to teach your, your, your friends or maybe even your siblings or your parents for, and for most of you about economics. So by producing ed the education for you, there's a positive externality for people around you. You can explain this stuff to your parents because frankly, most parents don't know what you're talking about when you start talking about economics, okay? So actually the marginal private cost of education is higher than what it would be because if it were lower, then guess what? More people would consume it, okay? So we draw the marginal, I'm sorry, the private, I'm sorry, the positive externality of production diagram like that, okay? And this curve right up here is the marginal private cost curve moved upwards to there, okay? So what does that say? What that says is there's a lot of opportunity right here. There is a lot of opportunity right here because this is the potential welfare gain if more education were consumed. So this is the argument that a lot of governments make. They say like, okay, education is being the price quantity combination of education is here. But the, uh, the ideal place where, where what would be ideal for society, the socially optimal point is always point B. In all of these how to draw series, that's the point B, Right. Wow, that's where you want to be. So the government wants to figure out how to have more education offered. It provides such a positive extra externality, a positive extra gain for those people who are around educated people that they just want to that they want to produce more. And this isn't the 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 video on how to solve this problem. If you want to see how to solve the positive externality of production, which means figure out a way for there to be more education consumed in a society, check out that video right there, which is the um, solutions to the positive externality of production. But we're just concentrating on how to draw it. This is how you draw it. This space right here is the externality, the positive externality created as a result of education being produced by me right? Or by any school anywhere around the world. I mean, and if you cross this over into YouTube, my goodness, can you believe what the incredible, incredible, incredible positive externality of production is for, for example, this YouTube channel? Like I have the ability and it's such an honor. It's so overwhelming. Sometimes I can't even really figure it out 
to speak with thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there. Like every single day, thousands of people are watching videos that I post on this, on this, on this channel for free, right? And think about the, the, the positive externalities of the production of these videos in terms of like, let's just say I produce these just for my like 60 kids I teach here at, at IB Economics in Santiago, Chile. All of you, if you're not in my class in Santiago, you're benefiting from me producing these um, for free. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. YouTube is a perfect example of a positive externality of production of videos. I mean, one of the first places that everybody goes to who has internet connection on this planet is YouTube to learn how to do anything, right? Like, how do you draw a positive externality of production diagram? Boom, there it is. You just learned it and it was free, right? So it's pretty, pretty amazing. All right. Um, There it is, okay? Make sure that you understand this. Right? Make sure that you study it, but most of all, know how it functions. And the government is going to figure out a way of getting Q2 to move out towards Q1. They want to close that gap there. All right, well, see, here's my thought. What is the best example of positive externality of production in the world than YouTube? Right? Like, you watch a YouTube channel, you learn to do something, and then you pass that understanding, right, from the production of videos on YouTube on to everybody around you. I mean, when we need to do something, we go to YouTube and try to figure out how to do it. Maybe that's how you found this channel. And I just thought, oh my goodness, why am I thinking so hard about the best example of a positive externality of production than my own YouTube channel, right? Like, it's free. Anybody who does this, I'm producing these videos and people are learning. And as a result of them learning, they can pass information on to others. So there is, an, there is a negative or rather a positive externality of production of these videos that goes way beyond anything that I could ever imagine. So anyway, positive externality of production, pretty cool, cool idea that there are these positive things that come as a result of the production of something. So education obviously being the best example. So I hope you found that video to be helpful. Listen, it's a complete honor and privilege to be able to have the ability to communicate with and teach thousands of people every single day via these videos. So let's stay in touch. Please subscribe and turn on the notifications so whenever I post something, you can see it. I want to know your opinions. I want to know your ideas. The world all around us is a classroom. I am constantly interested in experiences of other people from around the world and how economics plays into their lives. I mean, it's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Good deal, my friends. Take care of yourselves. I hope you found this video to be helpful in this entire How to Draw series, something that really makes your studies of economics much, much more clear. Good deal. Take care of yourselves out there and we'll talk to you in a bit.